Hello everyone, welcome back to another video and welcome to a disgusting day in the UK where there's just salt everywhere and cars are looking gross. You can literally spend five minutes on the road with this spotless clean car and it's looking like it's gone in a mud bath for two months. Anyway, today we're going to be talking about the UK driving theory test, the one you need to take before your practical test and something you need to do as part of the whole test package in general in the UK. If you don't know much about it, the UK theory test is split into two parts, the multiple choice writing and the hazard perception. At the time of recording this video, the test was around £23 in the UK, so try and avoid paying any more than that if you can, because if you aren't paying any more than that, unless it's changed and you're watching this in like a year's time, then you might be being ripped off or using a site that's not the original government website. So before we even got started, there's a tip for you. Use the official government website, link here, I'll put the link to it there. That's the website you need to use. Don't use any other ones because they might be charging a fee for no apparent reason and just trying to make some quick money off you. So, like I said, the theory itself is split into two parts. The first part is a multiple choice section which you are given 57 minutes for. It's a weird time, I know. In this section, you will need 43 out of 50 at least to be able to pass it, which gives you a fair amount of leeway, but you don't want to be getting near that because it it's just you want to give yourself as much chance as you can to pass with no worries and it makes you feel like a boss as well if you can go 50 out of 50 let me know in the comments if you get 50 out of 50 because I don't think I know anyone who's done that but let me know if you have so one of the first tips I can give you is to take your time with each question read it carefully make sure you've understood it and ticked the right answer there's a little flag on the bottom of each question it's you'll see it. It's a little tick flag that you can hit. And what that will do is it will bring up the question at the end for you to go over again. So if you're unsure of any question, hit that. And then at the end, use your time to go over the questions you've flagged. Make sure you've gotten those right. And then go over all the questions again, just to make sure you haven't answered any by mistake. Because uh, I know with the pressure on the day, you, you can sort of miss things or do silly answers by mistake. You don't have to rush. And at the same time, be careful that you don't overstep the mark. Don't spend 10 minutes on each question and then overstep your time because they won't give you any extra, so be careful there too. The hazard perception section, which comes after the multiple choice, is 15 minutes as well. Um, but one doesn't eat into the time of the other, so use the time for each properly. A tip is to put the time in studying beforehand a few weeks before. So when you know the date of the test, and even before that, do mock tests, put the time in, get yourself studying as much as you can because it's just such a pain in the ass having to retake the test. Not only is this gonna increase your chances of passing first time, but it's gonna make you a safer driver overall. The theory test is there for a reason to make sure you know just the basics of how the roads in the UK operate, the system around them. So it's there for you just to make sure you're confident on the road. A good example of this is uh, the warning signs for tight bends for slippery road conditions. If you know what these are, this could save you a, uh, a write-off. It could save you going into ditches. It could just make you a better driver overall. It could save you more than just time and money on the test, but it could save your life as well. You never know. The best tip I can give you is to make the most of online resources with uh, passing your theory test. There are hundreds, literally hundreds of free apps you can get on Android and iOS. There are online resources. I'll post my favorite uh, online mock test in the description. There's an official .gov one. Use multiple ones. Online is seriously your best friend here. There are websites which give you all the potential questions for the theory test as well, and you can go through all of them. There's hundreds, but you can go through all of them if you want to. And that's something that I did back in the day too. So make the most of those. Go over everything that you can, all the questions, just make sure that you're comfortable with the format as well that the uh, type of questions you'll be given are something you're comfortable with answering and the way they're structured if you do mock tests and then go in on the day it'll feel like it's no different so it's worth doing and feeling comfortable with at that time you can get paid and free apps the paid ones are a bit more comprehensive and have more to them but the free ones can be just as good i think i just used free ones because i was a cheapskate uh, and they were really good. They might not have as much content in them, so some of the paid ones, especially look at the reviews and everything, are actually worth going for. 
but again there are plenty of free online resources you can go and use so just make the most out of them if you get the ones on your phone um, you can tend to find that you can study up on breaks from work and school and things like that and I tend to find that those stick the most because if you've got your phone you can kind of just flip through them when you're on a break and again it's something that just sticks if you're constantly just taking little digs at it don't sit for hours staring at these resources as well. Do little and often, so in breaks, do so 10, 15 minutes every now and then, like a few times a day, every day if you can, uh, and just make it something that's sort of a routine, and then it will just, you'll find little bits will stick, and you might find that that will save you on the day as well. This is the same with the hazard perception side of the test too. There are tests you can do which are exactly, almost exactly the same as the ones you'll find on the day. So that'll just give you an idea for how to get used to the hazard perception. And uh, on, the, on the day, it will just be like different video clips. So you get used to when you need to click and when is too early, when is too much. The hazard perception is something that many people don't know much about or they forget about. And on this, you'll be shown 14 video clips 13 of them with a single hazard in them that you'll have to identify, one of them with two hazards. When it comes to the hazard perception test, a hazard comes in many different forms, so you should be on the lookout for a variety of potential dangers. A hazard is defined as anything that may cause a driver to change direction, speed or stop. There even could be potential to cause harm if the driver doesn't do any of these things. You'll be tested on developing hazards on the perception test though rather than static hazards such as tight bends, traffic lights, and the usual driving situations. Developing hazards will be anything from, but not limited to, pedestrians walking out in the road without warning, animals in the road, or people driving onto your side of the road or into your lane, such as on a dual carriageway, without looking or indicating. If you can spot potential developing hazards early, you can most often avoid them completely and even save others behind you from them too. So this is a crucial skill to have whilst on the public road. With clips like these, you're going to want to aim to click on the screen as soon as you spot the hazard developing. So as soon as you see the horse in this clip, you would click. As soon as you see the woman beginning to walk out into the road on this clip, you would click. So on and so forth. As soon as you notice the situation going wrong, click the mouse. The earlier you spot the hazard and click, the more points you will score out of 5 per hazard. If you're too late, then you won't score anything. And if you're too early, then you won't score anything either. So. Just click as you see it. The pass mark for the hazard perception is 44 out of 75. So there is a bit more leeway for this because it's a bit more vague. So don't worry if you fail like one clip or so, you have more chances. Uh, just make sure you get a good average score across the board and uh, you'll be fine. So a really basic tip before you take the test as well is to get a good night's sleep, eat well in the morning as well, because the last thing you want to have to deal with when you're on a test trying to remember the, the, the shape of a certain road sign is to have to deal with uh, being hungry or tired or both at the same time. And I know I've been through those as well and it's horrendous because you're just like, I could go for a pizza and I could go to sleep at the same time. That's not what you need to be focusing on. Also, remember to bring your driving license with you on the day too. You just need to bring the photo card now. You, there's no um, counterpart anymore. They got rid of that because people were losing the buggers. Uh, so, and for various other reasons as well, they degrade and all that. And I, I know I spilt whatever on mine. So just bring your license with you on the day, otherwise they're going to take your cash and make you rebook it. They're not going to give you any refunds. Uh, government refunds? No. So bring all the basics with you on the day, get there early on the test, and you can flick through one of the um, test apps before you go in on the day as well, just to make sure that you're refreshed on all the topics. It's all good. Remember, don't panic about it. If you do fail it, don't worry, get it rebooked straight away and go for it again. Remember that once you get the theory done, you have two years to get the practical done, so it's best to get it done ASAP anyway. Um, and way before two years are up because then you'll start to forget things that you've done on the uh, theory. So get it all done as soon as you can. It's gonna be so much of a load off once you've got it done, trust me. That feeling when you, when you pass your practical and your theory is, oh, just, it's nothing, it's like nothing else. Thank you for watching the video today. I really appreciate the support on the videos. The subs have been crazy and the views have been nuts. So thank you so much. Write down in the comments what you would like to see in future videos and if you've been liking the video so far, I really appreciate it guys. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.
drive safe and have a good one.